Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. A family of Neanderthals live hidden in caves, but when the continents begin to separate, they will need to team up with a Homo sapiens in order to survive. Today we will recap the story of the 2013 movie, The Croods. In the prehistoric world live the Croods, a family of Neanderthals who spend their days hiding in the cave to avoid predators. After their neighbors were wiped out by disease and various kinds of beasts, the Croods were completely isolated and had to fend for themselves completely. After three whole days stuck in the cave, Grug leaves early in the morning to get some food. To make the environment safe, Grug chases out the small dogs that were sleeping outside, but while he is doing this, Eep, the eldest daughter, comes out of the cave and starts complaining about being trapped for so long, but Grug ignores her and starts fighting with her for leaving before he says it is safe. Just then, Sandy, the youngest, also comes out of the cave and starts fighting with a giant mosquito, forcing her mother Ugga to also come out to help her. With practically the entire family outside, Grug gives up on checking if it is safe and asks Thunk, the brainless middle son, to also leave the cave. With only Gran missing, Ugga calls his mother out, and together the Croods get into formation and go out to hunt for their breakfast. After some miles of searching, the Croods find the nest of a prehistoric bird and decide to take its egg. Taking advantage that the bird is busy chasing some dogs that also want the object, Grug tells Thunk to get the egg, but when he tries to run, the bird hits him with her horn that sends the boy flying away. The bird picks up her egg and runs back to the nest with it, but at that moment, Ugga let go of Sandy and together they try to get the object out of the animal's mouth. In the midst of all this chaos, two lemurs get in the way and knock the bird down, stealing the egg from Ugga's hands. To guarantee her food, Gran comes on the scene and knocks down the lemurs with her staff, but others of the same species join in to knock down the old woman and retrieve the egg. To prevent them from escaping, Eep corners the lemurs, steals the egg, and runs back to the cave, but in the middle of the way, some bats try to take the food from her hand, forcing the girl to throw it to her father. With the egg in hand, Grug runs free in the direction of the cave, but when they are almost there, Thunk stumbles on the tail of a gigantic predator that begins to chase them. Now that his entire family is at risk, Grug speeds as fast as he can and sets everyone on a mammoth, causing the colossal animal to also be chased by the predator. The mammoth smashes the predator against the wall and continues running, but ends up hitting his head on, throwing all the croods up into the air. After Grug catches the egg, the croods can finally eat, but with so many mouths and a single food source, it certainly wouldn't be enough. When he realizes that it is getting dark, Grug tells everyone to go back to the cave, but instead of obeying, Eep scales the rocks to watch the sunset, forcing her father to go after her. While Eep is up in the tree looking at the horizon, Grug comes out of the cave and starts calling for the girl, but a predatory creature hears his shouts and attacks him. Not wanting to leave Eep behind, the father throws a rock that hits the creature right in the face and it rolls over, giving Eep enough time to climb down and they enter the lair. Back at home, Grug begins to scold his daughter for putting herself at risk, but wanting to avoid an argument between the two, Ugga interrupts her husband and asks him to tell her a story. Crazy as always, Grug takes the opportunity to tell a catastrophic story to say that curiosity is dangerous, leaving the family completely frightened. After the story, everyone lies down and sleeps peacefully, but in the middle of the night, Eep wakes up to strange sounds outside and finds something she has never seen before, the light of a torch. Not knowing what it is, Eep wastes a lot of time trying to capture it, but finally realizes that it is coming from the cave and, even being alone, removes the protective rock to see what it is all about. Outside, Eep sees the source of the light moving away and decides to chase it. After some time following the light, the girl sees the shadow of a horned creature and has the idea to throw a stone, but nothing happens and the shadow disappears soon after. Curious, Eep climbs the mountain where she finally finds the torch that was giving off that light, but as the girl watches the soot and tries to touch the flame, the stranger in a boar mask notices her presence and gets up to watch her, but Eep notices the stalker's presence and hits him with a judo attack. With the stranger on the ground, Eep picks up a super heavy rock and threatens to throw it at him, but gives up attacking him when the boy removes his mask, revealing himself to be Guy, a homo sapiens. When she realizes that Guy is also human, Eep drops the rock, which falls right on the boy's foot, making him scream in pain. In order not to attract the attention of the predators, Eep covers Guy's mouth, who, unaware of what she is doing, hits her right in the face, managing to get free. Since she has never seen someone like him before, the girl starts to analyze and smell the stranger, getting a fright when she finds Belt, a pet sloth that keeps holding his belt. While Guy and Eep are arguing, Grug wakes up with moonlight on his face and realizes that not only is the cave entrance unprotected, but Eep is also gone. To save his daughter, 
Grug overcomes his fear of the dark and leaves the cave in the middle of the night to try to find her. While he is searching for his daughter, the girl is on top of the mountain in a dispute with Guy for the torch, but when she discovers that, like her, he also hates the dark, she decides to leave him with the fire. Since she still wishes she had a torch, Eep tries to make him make one for her. But Guy says they don't have time and need to get out of there as soon as possible, because the world is ending. According to Guy, from where he came from the earth began to shake and open up, causing everything and everyone to fall into a fissure with a great sea of lava. Since this place is not safe, Guy says that they need to go to higher ground and invites Eep to go with him to a mountain where they will be safe, but Eep refuses because she cannot leave her family behind. As soon as Eep rejects the invitation, Guy hands her a shell so that she can communicate from afar and decides to continue on his way. In the middle of the dark, her father finds her and grounded her for going out alone. Furious, the girl returns home to find her whole family worried and, trying to calm them down, explains what happened. After telling them about Guy, Eep takes the shell and blows on it to try to call him, but afraid of the noise, the rest of the family throws the object on the ground and breaks it into several small pieces. At that moment, the ground begins to shake and a deafening rumble comes from underground. After the noise, the ground splits in half and the crack gets bigger and bigger. Grug tries to protect his family by ordering them to run back to the cave, but has to throw a stone to stop them when he realizes that a colossal rock is going to collapse right on top of them. As the rock falls, a cloud of dust rises into the air, covering the entire family. After all this chaos, the Crudes get up and realize that the cave they have lived in for generations is completely destroyed. While everyone is mourning their home, Eep sees that the earthquake has opened up a new biome on the horizon and tries to jump in to explore it, but Grug holds her back by saying that this place could be dangerous. Just then, that same predator from before reappears and traps them against the cliff, forcing the family to jump into the abyss, falling straight into the middle of a forest. Without a way back, the Crudes move on to try to find another cave, encountering along the way several magnificent creatures they have never seen before. After spending a whole day walking through the forest, the Crudes encounter a group of primates and Grug tries to frighten them, but the monkeys are not intimidated and start beating him up. Suddenly, the primates start running and Grug boasts that he has chased them away, until he notices the presence of some kind of giant saber-toothed tiger right behind him. To protect his family that is trapped, Grug tries once again to throw a rock at the beast, but the Sabertooth manages to defend himself easily. With nowhere to run, the Crudes climb a log, which is actually a huge creature that leads them to a plane. Still, the feline continues chasing his targets until a mysterious shadow appears on the ground, causing him to flee desperately. Not understanding why the Sabertooth has escaped, the family just watches a cloud of birds approaching, but panics when they see that the birds eat the carcass of a whale in a matter of seconds. Knowing that there is nothing they can do to survive, Eep runs to a bull's skull and grabs the horn to blow, to call for Guy's help. When he hears the sound, Guy sees the cloud of bloodthirsty birds and desperately runs to help them. He gets to the crudes, makes some sparks with friction, and manages to light a torch at the last second, repelling all the birds that dodge the fire. After the horde of birds leave, the crudes get scared of Guy and try to intimidate him somehow, but since he has dealt with cavemen before, Guy says he can take the lives of them all. Desperate, Eep tells him that those are her family and introduces them to the strange fellow, but curious about the fire, the crudes ignore him and try to interact with the torch. Clumsy as ever, Funk ends up letting a spark fall into his boar suit, which starts to catch fire because of the grease. Thinking that the flames are biting him, the genius runs to the tall, dry grass to see if the fire will go out, but as is obvious, this only serves to cause a widespread fire. In the middle of the flames, a giant corn cob catches fire and starts flying like a rocket, carrying everyone away at an absurd speed, but after a few meters they hit a tree and fall off the corn, causing the object to fly into the sky and explode, causing an incredible fireworks show that turns into a popcorn rain. After spending the night buried, Guy finally manages to get out from under the mountain of popcorn and decides to continue his plan to head towards the mountain, but Eep chases him and refuses to let him go, turning him into a prisoner. When he sees this, Grug asks the girl to let him go, but both she and Gran argue that he and the fire can be useful in the search for the new cave. Convinced by them, the father puts the boy inside a hollow log and begins to carry him in another direction, but Guy says that they should go to that mountain because besides having several caves, it is the safest place possible. Although the other crudes are convinced by his promise, Grug remains indifferent and continues walking, but when he sees the ground breaking up right in front of him, he changes his mind and decides to head for the mountain. Together, Guy and the crudes spend the whole day hiking until they find another bird alone in the middle of the plain. Since everyone is hungry, 
Grug decides that they will try to get the bird's egg like they did the day before, but since Eep is grounded and the other women are tired, he and Thunk go alone this time. As Thunk runs with the egg, Grug chases the bird trying to distract it, however the animal easily manages to retrieve its egg and crush Thunk with a wrestling move. Luckily for them, when the bird throw the boy into the ground, he crushes a scorpion that gets stuck to his clothes. Hungry, the crudes eat the arachnid, but since the animal is too small, Gran is not satisfied and tries to eat Thunk. As the crudes separate the two, Belt takes advantage of the distraction to try to roll Guy's trunk away, but Eep realizes what the plan is and prevents him from escaping. When the girl asks where he is going, Guy says he is hungry and that if she releases him, he will teach her a new hunting technique. Believing his promise, Eep helps him get off the log and together they set a trap, something she has never seen before. With the system ready, Eep and Guy set up a bird of leaves to try to lure the bird, but when the animal is about to step on the snare, they get tangled up and end up hitting the bird in the face with the leaves, leaving it in a rage. The bird grabs the leaves Guy is holding and throws them away, causing him to fall back onto the trunk. Alone, Eep starts running while being chased by the bird, but after some time running away, she gets the idea to go towards the trap, causing the bird to get caught in the snare. With the animal immobilized, Guy builds a fire and they roast the colossal bird, having the first decent meal of their lives. Seeing his family eating well for the first time thanks to Guy, Grug begins to feel inferior and, realizing this, Ugga tries to distract him by asking him to tell a story. Still upset, Grug meets with his family to tell them the story about a disobedient tigress who came out of the cave at night, a clear reference to Eep. At the end of the story, the father says that everyone has left the cave for a hike up the mountain, but as in all his tales, everyone is eliminated at the end. Surprised at the end of the story, Guy says that his tales usually end differently, and the crudes gather around him curious to hear the tale. Unlike Grug's, in Guy's story the protagonist goes to a cliff and flies to tomorrow, a magical place where everything is better. Finding the story boring, Grug says that tomorrow doesn't exist and is impossible to reach, but Guy claims that it does exist and that's where he wants to go. Jealous that his family liked the story, Grug tells everyone to go to sleep so that he can continue searching for the cave the next day. While they sleep, the continents continue to separate and a huge crater opens right next to them, with Guy almost falling into the abyss. With no time to waste, the crudes continue advancing towards the mountain, but as they pass through an area that was previously underwater, Eep ends up knocking Guy right into some rocky coral. Grug tries to go after to grab him, but since he is barefoot, he ends up piercing his feet into the sharp rocks. Since none of the crudes can step on the coral, Guy takes advantage of his shoes and runs free on the rocks, but after a few meters, he hears the family crying in pain trying to walk on that sharp ground and decides to go back to help them. Before he starts making shoes for them, Guy forces Grug to throw the log away and makes sure that he is now treated as a member of the family. After they accept, Guy uses the surrounding materials to make shoes so they can continue their journey. With the boys' help, the crudes keep heading for the mountain, but this time they manage to get through the obstacles much easier thanks to the ideas of the new member of the group. After a long walk, the crudes finally approach the mountain, but before reaching it they must pass through a rocky labyrinth. Guy says it's faster if they separate and hands them a signaling shell so they can meet, but Grug thinks this is a bad idea and refuses to part with his family. As Grug complains, the earthquake finally catches up with them, causing them to fall into different places in the maze. In this place, each of them takes a different path and Sandy, Gran and Ugga go through a forest of carnivorous plants while Eep and Guy have a romantic moment. After some time walking, everyone manages to reach the exit of the labyrinth, except for Grug who keeps blowing his shell, completely lost in the rocks. While they set up camp in a tree, Ugga goes to rescue Grug from the maze, but when they return, the hardhead prefers to stay alone on the forest floor, refusing to stay in something Guy has built. After Ugga joins them, Guy invites the crudes to see something new and takes them to the top of the tree. Once up there Guy puts out the torch and shows what they have missed in all these years living in the caves, the incredible beauty of the night sky. Jealous that everything Guy makes is more interesting, Grug goes back to the roots of the tree and spends the night thinking about how to prove himself. When dawn breaks, they come down from the tree and search for Grug, until they find him completely crazy trying to be Guy. After they manage to convince him to stop this madness, the crudes return to their journey towards the mountain while the ground continues to give way behind them. Afraid, Grug tries to take his family into a cave, but Eep refuses and tells them that him have all decided to go to tomorrow with Guy. Furious at being shortchanged, Grug is filled with rage and begins to chase after Guy. But after a while of chasing, Guy ends up getting stuck in a pool of tar. Since he cannot move, Grug goes all out on him, knocking him into the abyss. 
As they are stuck in the tar, they both slowly fall down the cliff until they reach an even bigger pool of resin. As Grug struggles to get free, Guy says that it's useless because no one can get out. At this point Guy tells him that his entire family was eliminated after spending days trapped in tar, but that before they were gone, they told him to never stop looking for tomorrow. Knowing what Guy has been through, Grug regrets everything and apologizes for the way he acted. At this point, they hear the saber-tooth tiger approaching and Guy has an idea. He asks Belt to build a saber-tooth with plants and from within the tar. They control the puppet to attract the feline, but this time it doesn't work. Realizing that the saber-tooth is not interested, Grug grabs the puppet and begins to control it to make it look like frightened prey. The tiger runs up to them and pulls the puppet with all his force, pulling them out of the tar. But when he realizes that he has been tricked, the saber-tooth is furious and goes all out on them, but gets his tail stuck in the tar and is thrown far away by the elastic force of the resin. At this point they are met by the crudes who are happy that they are okay, but they don't have time to celebrate as the earthquake reaches them once again, breaking the ground right out from under them. Showing that he has learned his lesson, Grug says it's time for them to leave and asks Guy to take them to tomorrow. Together, the crudes go over the top of the mountain and arrive on a plain that is covered by clouds, the long-awaited tomorrow. At that moment, the earthquake reaches them once again, and as the family desperately runs to their goal, the ground breaks right in front of them, preventing the family from continuing their journey. With no way forward, Uga says that it is dangerous to stay there and that they should go back to the cave, but Grug refuses and decides that he will take them to tomorrow. Grug has the idea of using his strength to throw them to the other side, and this is exactly what he does with Guy. After Guy is thrown, the crudes are apprehensive not knowing if he is okay, until after a few seconds, Guy blows his shell signaling that he is safe. When they see that he has made it to the other side, the family is reassured and Grug decides to go ahead with the plan, throwing Funk and the rest of the family to tomorrow, leaving only Eep. When her father tries to throw her out, the girl refuses to go and says that she still has a lot to talk about, but Grug hugs her and says that the only thing he wants to talk about is that he loves her. Knowing that he won't make it to the other side, Grug apologizes for being a bad father and says goodbye. At that moment, the ground shakes again, Grug picks up Eep on his arms and throws her to the other side. When everyone is safe, the ground collapses again, and Grug runs into a cave to avoid being crushed by the rocks. In the dark cave, the father takes some stones and tries to make fire with friction, managing to light a torch for the first time. Happy to have learned, Grug goes on to celebrate with his family until he remembers that he is alone. As a last tribute, he takes some iron oxide and makes a drawing on the rock of his entire family reunited, including Guy. Just as he completes the drawing, another earthquake happens and knocks him to the ground, putting out the torch. When he gets up, and rekindles the fire, he realizes that the saber-tooth is right behind him. Trapped, Grug tries to scare the tiger away with flames, but the raging animal manages to extinguish his torch with a single breath. At that moment, a gigantic boulder breaks, causing a crash that leaves the tiger so frightened that he re-lights the torch himself. Terrified, the saber-tooth snuggles up and lies down on top of Grug, sleeping on his lap. Accepting the end, Grug just sits there while petting the tiger, but when he hears the sound of a shell coming from the other side, he gets up in despair and, thinking that his family is in danger, begins to think of a way to cross over. After a while thinking, Grug finally has an idea. Together with the saber-tooth, he takes part of a whale skeleton and soaks it with tar. After this, he goes to the top of the mountain and attracts the attention of the birds, luring them straight to the skeleton, where they are all trapped. So when they try to fly away from the falling rocks, the birds lift the skeleton. With the help of a torch, Grug guides the birds toward tomorrow, but just as they are reaching the division between the continents, they are hit by a gigantic explosion. Not knowing if Grug is alive, the crudes go to the tip of the continent and keep blowing the shell waiting for an answer from him, but instead, the man appears completely out of control on the horizon. After their soft landing, Grug is reunited with his family, but unlike before which was just six Neanderthals in a cave, the crudes now also have Guy and various pets that Grug saved, as well as arriving at the long dreamed of, tomorrow. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.